working in the architectural office, I often get um, CAD uh, data like this from uh, AutoCAD format. And often I need to model this to, to model up the existing uh, terrain with the buildings. And um, I'm just going to demonstrate some of the tools I've wrote to to help me uh, make this process a little bit easier. Um, I collected them in a suite called Architect Tools, and some of them might be uh, a bit uh, niche targeted to the type of uh, models and data I use, but hopefully be useful to see other people as well. Um, here I have the imported um, CAD data with all the different layers and or each layer got a unique uh, four digit code which is quite useful to identify um, each of them. For instance Everything within 5,000 relates to the buildings. If I turn this on or off, that will be the building layers. And I'm going to start with generating um, the main volumes for these buildings. Now, it's a generate building button here, and it's not as magical as it might sound, but it creates some of the basic volumes if your um, if your data uh, is is good enough. Uh, it all depends. So, some of the older map maps I've got doesn't usually work that well because they're not accurate enough. But if I click this, I'll be asked to uh, specify uh, layers through the layer filter, and here I used the four digit codes that you can find in my layer tool. I'm just going to expand that so I can see that a little bit better. Now, each keyword is comma separated, so I could type anything in here, and as long as it matches any part of the layer name, it will be included. Uh, that's why the four digit codes are quite uh, useful to prevent. Um, uh, that the wrong layer is picked up. So I have here, this is my last settings, and I'm not sure if this is enough. I know that I want this layer, 5082, and I think I want 503, Maybe I want five one. Mm, well, we'll see first. I can just go back afterwards. Now, what it does is, is it will take all of the layers uh, from these, uh, all the lines from these layers here, and project it down to uh, the ground level of the model, and then it will try to connect that and and find um, uh, faces and surfaces. And each of these faces will be pushed, pulled back up until either the lowest or highest point right above it. I prefer the, the lowest so I can easily push, pull up if needed. The tolerance is um, tolerance it, it used when it tries to connect open gaps because of tiny inaccuracies in the model. Groups, it will group every face by itself. Um, some uh, imported maps is easy to work with, um, particularly if you have like a city region where the buildings are clustered together and you want to isolate them uh, more easily, otherwise, you just end up with a one big mesh. Now, I'm just going to see what happens if I use the current settings here. Man. And we'll see it doesn't works.
trying to connect open edges and open ends. And um, we didn't get a whole lot. There's just a few volumes being push pulled. I suspect it's a missing. It's yeah, probably this one. So I need. I'm just going to go undo. And I need to make sure we have the 501 layer as well. Let's completely undo this. There you go. Five, zero, zero, one. Okay. And just let it run through the edges again. And we will see moldings, volumes. Now, that is this not perfect still. There's still some, I'm not sure what kind of. It's probably because it's hit the edge of the um, the map, so it didn't close up. But that can be fixed manually later on. And a few places where there's there's too many overlapping edges to where it can actually manage and make um, proper connections to it. Like here, there's some strange stuff going on. But at least you have the faces so you can later. Um, pull them up. So this isn't actually the best map. If it had been a, a good map, it probably would have included um, edges to define these contours of the roof as well. Uh, as a starting point. I mean, this is, you can get quite far with this. Um, if you go up, open up this group, you can see it's all it's in one big mesh, which works fine for this map because each building is pretty much separated anyway. Um, now, let's say I want to make this roof, correct that. And it didn't push pull this properly even, so I'm just gonna put that back. And I have a giant magnet tool, which basically allows me to click on this. And it didn't immediately project up to that point, but that's where I want it. So the blue surface represent where the new um, surface will be. So if I do the equal on this side, I pick this face, and I want it up there and up there. And because it had so many weird things, in, I just have to do that manually. Now. And then if you can see in the status bar it just says press return to commit and there you go it has uh, moved the faces up so we get a proper proper roof and you can see here it automatically smooths the auto folded um, faces you can do the same thing a few times here just to repeat the steps um, I can see because of the thick outline here that they're not quite even. I want to do that because it is easier if the, both of the faces share the same edge. And I'm going to pick the giant magnet again. And, and this time it didn't snap properly to the edge. It doesn't always work well, but so if it gets most of the job done.
and pretty quickly. Now I click both of them, snap, that worked well, didn't snap, doesn't matter, it's close enough. Click, click, no snapping, I don't know what you want. There you go. And and it, you know, you can just work around to map the model until you get to the level of detail you want. There's more tools which can be used for this, which has sort of a special purpose, but I'll demonstrate that in, a, in separate videos because they're quite they're quite um, awkward to use, to be honest. So they deserve some more detailed explanation.